And then what they've done, the final insult as well, they sandwiched me between two um, very racist guys. I call them EDOs. So what would happen is that when we were, when I used to walk past as well, you used to hear them. They used to sing a song. They used to sing a song, um, Little Monkey on the treetop. And they'll go, where's the banana? Where's the banana? So they go, little monkey on the treetop. Seriously. I had to, sometimes I had to pose. I had to look and they go, where's the banana? Where's the banana? And then when I, yeah. And when I used to give them an education now, yeah. the officers say, you're nicked. You're That's inciting. That. These are the things that look they used that. to say. And they used to do it to all the brothers. They used to say yeah. some things that I'm not going to repeat here. We can't repeat about our beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all these types of things. There was one that even burned a Quran. How did he get a Quran in the first place? You know, he's a top racist. He's burnt a Quran and you know this, he's provoking. But you say that, no, we're provoking. So all these things were actually happening. So what they will do is they'll take it in turns. I'll never forget these two racist guys. So one will start with all the kind of abuse through the day. Then he will get his sleep. And then the other one through the night. <laughs> and they were rot- oh, <laughs> they were rotating deep, that way. Wow, and you're in the middle. Yeah, I'm in the middle. So you know, I used to I used to have conversations with them in it. And I said and I and I used to say I used to say to them as well that oh, oh, hold, let me stop it. you never physically like No. You can't you can't you, yeah, you're behind the door all the time, basically. Mm. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Behind the door. Remember, I'm, so the I'm in, yeah, yeah, I'm in solitary confinement. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. So I used to, you know, I used to educate them. I used to like say to them, like, you know that um, there was a black king of Britain, Kenneth MacDoop. You know this, don't you? And they'll go mad. No, there's no, there's no end. No one, no ends ever run this country. There's no, like, you know, they'll go all mad. And I'll say, so why are you so upset for? Like, people can see that as I'm trying to provoke them. But remember, they, they're bothering me all the time. Yeah, yeah, of course. They're saying all these things. They never get nicked. Never got nicked. Until one of them, again, I'm going to tell you, this is why you put your trust in Allah and we keep civil. Even in the midst of what is actually going on, when you keep your own integrity, Allah makes it easy for you because one of them took his life. In the sick? Yeah, he took his life. While you were there? Mm. I don't feel sorry for him, but it is what it is, isn't it? Look at that. That's four. Because you know what it is? These people are miserable within themselves, you know that? Hundred and one. They want to take that misery out on other people. And what that's one of the channels they've got. And what was so sad as well that you can see the officers laughing about this as well. Even having like a little giggle. Mm. Especially it, when they used to sing the song and you in the see it, like they had a chorus to it and everything. Like, you know, like now you have to now, but you have to laugh like little monkey, like it's it's mad like even like on a yard and you walk past some of them and they all waving their hands like you know like it's like a football scene like they want a terrence or something and then they go like you know they, they put their heart and soul into it like they go like where's the banana where's the banana like you know like you have to laugh though because how, how else can you how else can you Madness, manage that without yeah. going crazy like they would all be seeing and so i used to wind them off as like yeah like you know like you just I say you idiots, you, man. You, you know, it's it's quite obvious that a portion of prison officers kind of help these racist inmates to either attack Muslims or mock them or mock the religion or stuff like that. They kind of assist them in it and make it easy for them to do it and not, there's no repercussions for them. No, definitely. And I've always said this as well because one of the things that um surprised me as well was that how um two-faced that they were as well sometimes. And it's very hard to... I can understand that why some people may have a negative um, opinion about some people that have a duty of care. And I, I give you an example. I got along with one particular officer. I had not had a problem with him. So they were transferring me. There was a few of them. So I was, where was I going? I think I was going Long Lawton. So I had to move to the second Long Lawton. So we're on the van. Now, they're talking about, I think there was a boat that capsized and there was a little kid that was killed, that died. It capsized, a little Muslim kid. I think it was Turkey or whatever, it capsized. Yeah. <coughs> I'll never forget this. I heard the officer say. Yes, the Syrian kid, I think it was. Mm. Yeah. I had, a kid, I had the officer say, I don't care about that. 
are they coming over here for anyway? And I'm thinking, this is a child. Oh, ruthless, man. And I'm saying that you're showing no compassion. Mm. I don't care. I don't care. What color religion is. What color, what faith, what kind of. That's a child. And you're saying that you don't care. And I'm glad that you didn't come to Britain. Look at that. And I said, what am I really dealing with here? And they're the people that are handling you in prison, in charge of you. 101%. If they could so get what? away with killing you, they would have killed you. If they knew they would get away with it, they would have done it. Yeah, there was times where though, but we have to be honest here as well. There was times where that another officer grabbed and said that, listen, I'm not going to prison for this. Mm. They've had me and you're choking. You can hear when somebody's choking and wheezing. They've got you. And the other officer let go of his neck. I'm not going to prison for this. How many times, just to, you know, give people a context, would you say you were assaulted? I'm not, I'm not talking about restraint, I'm talking about assaulted by prison officers. How many different occasions um, in that 22 years? I've lost count. Roughly, if you could just throw out a figure. It's more than 20. That's nuts. That's like every year, basically. That's deep, but listen, man. I'm not here to feel sorry for myself because I understand that I was a person as well. But the thing that I don't like as well is that when people are making real changes and the system doesn't allow you to. And again, I'm going to say this as well. There is a lot of unfair things that are actually happening. Look. Then the biggest shock of my life happened. <clears throat> so let's fast forward it now. I'm trying to fast forward it so we can give the, because yeah. we want to keep on this subject as well. Of course, yeah, yeah. This is the main subject. So parole board, parole hearing. Had the biggest shock. Now, what they're saying is halfway through my parole that I have to leave. Could you imagine somebody leaving their parole hearing? They're saying that they've got information and intelligence that cannot be shared whilst I'm present. Then they said my barrister had to fill out a form that she's liable for imprisonment if it leaks out. Wow. Draconian, man. This is just madness. Then they do this thing um, that the public has to be aware of as well. It's called probability. So, for example, as well, I was found not guilty for the cutting of the throat and the injury, injury of the officer. I was found not guilty in a court of law. Let's say that it was thrown out. So not thrown out, sorry, I was found not guilty. guilty yeah. There's no arguments about that. Now, what happened is when I had my parole hearing, they were saying that we understand what the judges said. See, they're not even playing by their own rules. They're saying we understand what the judge said, but we're not convinced. We believe you did do it. <laughs> so that's what probability is. So what was the, the whole court case? Just they're making it up as they go along. Now you understand. So this is the kind of challenges that many brothers are, and it's actually hindering their progression because that's all somebody needs to do. The constant, you know, even when I was, one of the biggest problems that I had, funny enough, was when I was in Brixton Prison, coming to it like I was in a CCAT now, I was in LPU, I'm close to home, you know, trying to. And the amount of security searches that I've had was unbelievable. Every other week I was getting, you can ask my wife. So they were making all kind of, um, then I found out another intel they had that they were concerned. They said that they believe that I'm radicalizing my mom. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. This was a big thing. These people are crazy, you know. They just throw things out. You know what I realized talking to you? Mm. It's only talking to you I realized this. You know this stuff we keep seeing in the papers the last 10, 15 years about Muslims in prison, radicalizing people. This is from them. They've put this information out just to justify their actions. So no matter what 100%. they do to the prisoners in, in jail now, the public will say, yeah, but they're mad anyway, so just keep doing it. Yeah, of course. They're so terrorists that, and so forth. It for. makes sense because I was like, yo, I spent five years behind the door. Mm. Not five years. I spent five years behind the door. I said, bro, I've never seen someone forced to a Muslim. That's right. You know, I've never seen someone say, oh, let's go beat up a non-Muslim because he's a non-Muslim. That's right. I was like, I was, where, I, was like I, I was asking myself, what prison did this happen in? <laughs> you know, like, like, where does this happen? They I see it. You know what's so crazy as well? This is when I knew that I was really dealing with something that was just so horrendous. Um, Guys, today's podcast is in partnership with Stone & Co. solicitors, experts in serious and complex criminal matters. If you have a criminal matter that you need help with or you've been arrested and want the best representation, 
contact the number below or drop them an email. All the information is on the screen below, as you can see. Stone & Co can offer specialist criminal defense services on a private basis or legal aid, so you don't pay nothing. And as a promotion offer, they're offering a case review in person or over the phone, free of charge, no obligation, no fees, and they'll take a look at your case, guys.